Hey there, folks. Get ready to dive into a rib-tickling journey through the ages as we explore the history of contraception in our hilarious video titled Spitting in a Frog's Mouth Eating a Bee, the story of contraception from ancient times. Trust me, this is going to be one wild ride. Before we dive into today's amazing content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. We appreciate your support, and it helps us create more fantastic videos like this one. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. Back in the day, our ancestors pondered over the ways to dodge unwanted pregnancies. Their methods might seem downright comical now, but who's to say our modern-day techniques won't raise a few eyebrows among future generations? Let's start with the ancient methods. In ancient Egypt, women applied a salve made from crocodile dung on their nether regions before any hanky-panky went down. Yes, you heard that right. They believed this magical concoction killed those pesky spermatozoa. And wait for it, after the deed was done, Egyptian women would indulge in baths or even make compresses out of spider silk. Talk about unique post-coital rituals. But here's the kicker. The Egyptians are also credited as the inventors of the tampon. That's right, folks. They had not one but two types of tampons. These bad boys were inserted deep into the vaginal canal. The first kind was made of cotton mixed with crocodile dung and honey. Yes, they really had a thing for crocodile excrement. The second one was crafted from honey combined with acacia infusion. The Egyptian ladies were convinced that the stickiness of honey would hinder those determined little swimmers from reaching the egg. Talk about thinking outside the hive. The recipes for these tampons have come down to us through the ages, thanks to the papyrus Petri. Scholars estimate that this fascinating document dates back to around 1850 BCE. The Kahuna papyrus, consisting of three sheets, contains medical texts on gynecology. It lists 17 diagnoses of female ailments, 17 symptoms of pregnancy, recipes for conception, contraception, and even prescriptions for hysteria treatment. And that's not all. This document also includes lists of priests, temple inventory, and a few literary texts. Who knew tampons could have such a rich history? Now let's hop over to India, where women had their own tampon preferences. But fear not, no crocodile dung involved this time. Indian ladies opted for tampons made from elephant dung. Yes, you heard me correctly. Elephant dung. As an alternative, they also had a salve made from rock salt mixed with vegetable oil. It was applied internally just before getting frisky. Quite the conversation starter, wouldn't you agree? But hold on, folks. The Indian male yogis had their own nifty technique called the virola mudra. By practicing this technique, they claimed to block the spermatic channel. Now that's some serious skill right there. And there you have it, folks. A glimpse into the bizarre and chuckle-worthy world of ancient contraception. Buckle up and get ready for more laughter-inducing stories in the rest of our video. Stay tuned, and remember, history can be hilarious. Let's go to the vibrant land of Arabia, where the ladies had their own unique approach. Picture this. Arabian women inserted tampons soaked in animal dung and earwax into their nether regions. Who knew cow pies and a little ear candy could be the secret recipe for birth control? And hold on to your turbans because they even threw cabbage into the mix. That's right, folks. Tampons with a side of slaw. Unfortunately, these magical recipes didn't survive the test of time. Probably for the best, I'd say. Now let's venture into ancient China, where the women took contraception to a whole new level. Chinese ladies would insert a concoction of oil and mercury into their lady gardens. Oil and mercury? Talk about a slippery situation. But wait, there's more. These resourceful women weren't just into mechanical barriers. They also dabbled in what we can call oral contraceptives. They would prepare special mixtures to drink before getting busy instead of sipping on tea. These mixtures included cedar resin and pomegranate, because nothing says birth control like a fruity cocktail. Now let's hop over to Africa, where the ladies had their own grassy solution. African women would wrap freshly cut grass in pieces of fabric and use them as makeshift tampons. Talk about getting back to nature. I can only imagine the conversation among the zebras and lions. Hey, Karen, could you pass the grass tampon, please? 
But don't worry, we're not done yet. In the land of the rising sun, Japanese geishas had their own secret weapon. Bamboo paper tampons. Yes, you heard it correctly. Bamboo paper tampons. It's like origami meets contraception. Who said art couldn't be functional? And let's not forget our European ladies during the Middle Ages. They were all about the DIY tampons. Whether it was cotton, paper, or a creative mix of both, these ladies would whip up their own tampons using the finest ingredients like vinegar. Ah, oh, the sweet smell of medieval birth control. Back in the day, washing out the old lady bits was considered a popular contraceptive method. Yep, you heard it right. Different cultures had their own special concoctions for vaginal rinses. Native American women in North America brewed potions using redwood and lemon. Latin American folks had a thing for a brew infused with lavender, olo, juniper, and pineapple. Meanwhile, Roman ladies went the extra mile by making their concoctions from plants collected in the groves of the Temple of Proserpina, the goddess of the underworld. And hey, Greek gals chewed on carrot seeds like they were going out of style. But wait, it gets even more bizarre. Ancient physician Soranus of Ephesus, who lived from 98 to 138 BCE, had some unique recommendations. His advice for women after a month of hanky-panky, jump seven times, no more, no less. And right after the deed, he suggested some good old vaginal breathing. Yep, you heard it correctly again. This mind-boggling respiratory gymnastics was supposed to help expel any unwanted elements by flexing those muscles. And just to add some spice, Serenus proposed vaginal suppositories made of pomegranate and ginger. Who knew contraceptives could double as kitchen ingredients? Now let's travel to Africa, where the ladies had their own method. It involved extended breastfeeding for years on end. We'll talk about dedication. Although, truth be told, this practice often led to fertility problems because, you know, the body can only take so much. But hold on tight because the Mexican shamans have arrived with their truly bizarre suggestions. Their contraceptive approach? Eat bees or run around searching for frogs and spit in their mouths? Yep, they believed these methods worked like magic. Don't forget your running shoes and bug spray. Now, shifting gears to ancient Russia, where women would seek out herbalists for their secret concoctions to induce miscarriages. These potions contained ingredients like nettle, burdock, juniper, peas, and more. Oh, and here's a fun one. They were also advised to eat bees because, apparently, bee venom could stop pregnancy. And if that wasn't enough, there was a method involving a mixture of horse manure, honey, herbs, and a cloth to be inserted. Well, you get the picture. No wonder it didn't catch on. Lastly, let's hop over to the Middle Ages, where folks had some interesting theories. According to many medieval thinkers, pregnancy could only occur if a woman reached orgasm at the same time as her partner. They were convinced that it was a strictly synchronized event. In fact, they went as far as suggesting that lovemaking should only happen outside of a woman's menstrual cycle. Talk about strict scheduling and missed opportunities for spontaneity. And there you have it, a hilarious and mind-boggling journey through the unconventional world of ancient contraception. So... Fasten your seatbelts, because we're about to explore these ancient methods, like never before. So it turns out that back in the day, people came up with some pretty wacky ideas to avoid baby-making situations. First up, we have the legendary Queen of Crete, wife of King Minos. Now, this queen had a little problem down there with sneaky snakes and scorpions lurking in her hubby's royal seed. So what did she do? She whipped out her arts and crafts skills and fashioned a condom out of a good old goat's bladder. Yep, you heard that right. A goat's bladder. Talk about DIY protection gone badass. But the creativity didn't stop there. In Africa, they took a walk on the wild side and used crocodile skin pouches as their contraceptive go-to. Talk about taking inspiration from the animal kingdom. Now let's zoom in on Egypt, where they had a thing for condom covers. They were so keen on keeping things safe and sound that they even painted them in ancient frescoes. I mean, who doesn't want their bedroom art to feature some extra hiero protection, right? Talk about a stroke of artistic genius. But wait, folks, we're not done yet. Hold on to your camels because we're riding into Arabia. 
These daring souls took a leap of faith and crafted condoms out of animal intestines. That's right. They went for some real gutsy business down there. Hats off to their bravery. Meanwhile, in China, they embraced their silky smooth side. Forget the scratchy stuff. They wrapped it up in silk. Talk about luxurious lovemaking. I bet they were the envy of the world with their fancy schmancy condoms. Who needs red silk robes when you can have a red silk love glove, am I right? But hold on tight, because things are about to get sheepishly wild. In 17th century England, King Charles II wanted to keep his throne contenders to a minimum, so he enlisted the help of a doctor named Condom. Seriously, Dr. Condom? This clever doc researched historical methods and came up with the brilliant idea of using sheep intestines as a barrier. His invention was a hit among the high society folks, and they started using it left and right. Talk about being bomb-aired with ideas. But fear not, my friends, because the rubber era was just around the corner. In the 19th century, they finally realized that washing and reusing sheep intestines wasn't the most sanitary option. So they introduced rubber condoms that could be easily washed and reused. They were thrilled with this breakthrough, although their reliability wasn't exactly top-notch. Can you imagine the anxiety of Will It Pop during intimate moments? Yikes! Thankfully, by the late 19th century, latex condoms came to the rescue. They were more dependable and people could finally breathe a sigh of relief, knowing that their love escapades were well protected. But wait, hold on to your hats, because the 20th century took a bizarre turn. Can you believe that some countries actually fought against condoms? They considered them immoral and unnatural. I mean, come on, folks, it's all about safe fun. It was like a rubber rebellion, one latex warrior at a time. And let's not forget poor Ireland, where the condom ban lasted until the 1970s. Talk about being fashionably late to the contraceptive party. Finally, in 1982, when the world discovered the transmission of the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, condoms became the superhero of safe sex. Supermarkets and stores started stocking them up, making them easily accessible to all. And just when you thought the condom innovation had reached its climax in 1990, the female condom known as the Femidom made its grand debut. Because equality matters, my friends. It was like a gender revolution in the world of contraception. So there you have it, folks. The hilarious journey of condoms throughout history, from goat bladders to crocodile pouches, silk to sheep guts, and the modern-day latex superheroes, it's been one heck of a ride. Remember, folks, stay safe, stay protected, and keep the laughs coming.